Hi everyone, it's time to open the Book of the Month Club. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome to my channel, to my returning viewers, my subscribers. Thank you guys so much. You guys are amazing and I appreciate that you take a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means some more to me than I can ever let you know. If you're new to my channel, please uh, consider hitting that little red subscribe button over there. I'd love to have you come back to join us for future videos. And I love uh, that our YouTube family and friends just is growing. It just it means a lot to me so i hope you would subscribe and come back and join us today i'm doing my book of the month club and there were five books so book of the month club it costs 14 dollars 99 a month if you use my link below you would get five dollars off your first book of the month i would get a credit for a free book i believe and every month you get a choice of five books easy enough to just skip if nothing sounds interesting to you I'm, I'm suppose if you've been in a book of the month club for a while you've probably read a lot of books so easy enough to do you just click skip right if none of the five books that they've picked for us for the book of the month um, they have a huge library of other past book of the the months and books of the year collection that you can choose from you can put those in your to be read list or your wish list so you can always go back and find what something that you wanted later or you watch somebody's video and you say oh my god that book sounds good you can put it right in that list so the next month maybe you can grab that month or you can buy more than one book a month too yeah I've done that so anyway five books to choose from We'll get to the one I chose in just a minute, but we'll just kind of read a little bit about the ones that I had to choose from. Alrighty, so the first book that I had to choose from was called Sisters in Arms. So, this is a true story, based on a true story. So it says, Grace Steele and Eliza Jones may be from completely different backgrounds, but when it comes to the Army, specifically the Women's Army Auxiliary Course, or the WAC, they are both starting from the same level. Not only will they be among the first class of female officers the Army has ever seen, they are also the first black women allowed to serve. As these courageous women helped to form the 6,888th Central Postal Directory Battalion, they are dealing with more than just Army bureaucracy. Everyone is determined to see this experiment fail. For two Northern women, learning to navigate their way through the segregated army may be tougher than boot camp. Grace and Eliza know there is no room for error. They must be more perfect than anyone else. When they finally make it overseas to England and then France, Grace and Eliza will at last be able to do their part for the country they love. Whatever the risk to themselves, Based on the true story of the 6,888th Postal Pavilion, Sisters in Arms explodes, explores, not explodes. We don't want the girls to explode. The Army explores the untold story of what life was like for the only all black female U.S. battalion to be deployed overseas during World War II. So that sounded interesting, but I'm more on the idea for whatever, so that could be a future read. So if you've read that one, I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Next, we have Razor Blade Tears. So this is a black father, a white father, two murdered sons, a quest for vengeance. Ike Randolph has been out of jail for 15 years, with not so much as a speeding ticket in all that time but a black man with cops at the door knows to be afraid. The last thing he expects to hear is that his son Isaiah, or Isaiah has been murdered along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. Ike has never fully accepted his son, but he's devastated by the loss. Derek's father, Buddy Lee, was almost ashamed of Derek, of being gay, as Derek was ashamed his father was a criminal. Buddy Lee still has contacts in the underworld, though, and he knows who killed the boy. Ike and Buddy Lee, two ex-cons, with little else in common other than a criminal past and a love for the dead sons, 
band together in the desperate desire for revenge, in the quest to do better for their sons in death than they did in life. Hardened men, Ike and Buddy Lee, will confront their own prejudices about their sons and with each other as they rain down vengeance upon those who hurt their boys. Provocative and face back, face past, fat, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Provocative and fast paced, S.A. Cosby's Razor Blade Tears is a story of bloody retribution, heartfelt change, and maybe even redemption. All right, that's kind of like, that sounds like it's gonna be a tearjerker. The people we keep. So Little River, New York, 1994. April Sawaki is living in a motorless motorhome that her father won in a poker game. Failing out of school, picking up shifts at Marco's Diner, she's left fending for herself in a town where she's never quite felt at home. When she borrows, maybe air, quote, air quotes, when she borrows her neighbor's car to perform at an open mic night, she realizes her life could be so much bigger than where she came from. After a fight with her dad, April packs her stuff and leaves for good, setting off on a journey to find a life that's all hers. Driving without a chosen destination, she stops to rest in Ithaca. Her only plan is to survive, but as she looks for work, she finds a kindred sense of belonging at Cafe Decadence, the local coffee shop. Still somehow, it doesn't make sense to her that life could be this easy. The more she falls in love with her friends in Ithaca, the more she can't shake the feeling that she'll be hurt them, that she'll hurt them the way she's been hurt. As April moves through world, meeting people who feel like home, she chronicles her life in song she writes and discovers where she comes from doesn't dictate who she has to be. The lyrical, unflinching tale is anyone who has ever yearned for fierce power of found family or to grasp the found beauty of choosing to beyond belong. I have no idea why I can't read. But anyway, that one sounds really good too. I wonder why I didn't pick that one. Well, next one. We are the Brennans. When 29-year-old Sunday Brennan wakes up in Los Angeles Hospital, bruised and battered after a drunk driving accident she caused, she swallows her pride and goes home to her family in New York. But it's not easy. She deserted them all and her high school sweets, sweetheart. Five years before, with little explanation, they all have questions. Sunday is determined to rebuild her life back on the East Coast, even if it does mean tiptoeing around resentful brothers and an ex-fiance. The longer she stays, however, the more she realizes they need her just as much as she needs them. When a dangerous man from her past brings her family's pub business to the brink of financial ruin, the only way to protect them is to upend all their secrets. Secrets that have damaged the family for generations and threaten everything they know about their lives. In the aftermath, the Brennan family is forced to confront painful mistakes and ultimately find a way forward together again. Alrighty, that one sounds good too. And now, for the book that I chose for my book of the month club. Drum, oh, drum roll please. Yeah, I should have done that the other side thing, but it's upside down to confuse you guys. 56 Days by Katherine Ryan Howard. And every month you do get a new bookmark the original read receipt alrighty so let's hear about the book I chose are you ready yeah okay so when COVID first struck several authors I know grappled with the question of whether to acknowledge the pandemic in their upcoming novels at the time a lot of novelists novelists decided against it the global crisis was so rapidly changing and immense that they feared it might overpower the storylines. But into that conundrum, 
stepped Katherine Ryan Howard, who took the opposite approach, and with great success. Not only did she capture the bottled up emotions and literal confines of the quarantine, she also wove them into a pitch perfect thriller that presents new revelations on page after page. 56 Days situates itself in the jittery, almost otherworldly setting of Dublin, just as the virus begins to seep ashore in Ireland. We meet a young couple, Ciara and Oliver, who decide to enter lockdown together, even though they've only been on a couple of dates and each secretly feels a bit wary of the other. Cue the goosebumps, because within a few weeks, someone is dead. It's a terrific, chilling premise, elevated by the plot's sophisticated architecture, like a game of Jenga. The chapters pile up with subtle clues and layered twist until one final piece is revealed, causing everything to come crashing down. This is the first rate thriller not to be missed. So it says no one they knew no one knew they moved in together. Now one of them is dead. Could this be the perfect murder? Fifty six days ago. Sierra and Oliver meet in a supermarket queue in Dublin the same week COVID-19 reaches Irish shores. 35 days ago when lockdown threatens to keep them apart, Oliver suggests that Sierra move in with him. She, was, she sees a unique opportunity for a new relationship to flourish without the pressure and scrutiny of family and friends. He sees it as an opportunity to hide who and what he really is. Today, detectives arrive at Oliver's apartment to discover a decomposing body inside. Will they be able to determine what really happened? Or has lockdown provided someone with the opportunity to commit the perfect crime? Alrighty, so yeah, I read that and it was like, yeah, I had to get this one. Plus it's kind of like a timeline of COVID and something that even though, well, it sounds stupid, but even though you don't want to cherish the memory of COVID, you don't want to forget that it happened. You don't want to wipe it under the rug, which maybe some point in the future, someone will say, hey, we don't want to remember that. Yeah, this is causing me grief. It's causing, yes, yeah, it never happened. Well, it happened. So 56 days. I'm really looking forward to reading this one. It sounds entertaining. It sounds thrilling. It sounds like there's going to be nights that I'm not going to be able to just read one chapter. But that sounds really good. But I just want to let you know that I finished my other book that I've been looking so forward to reading, Home Before Dark. So this one, it didn't end the way that I thought it would end, but it had enough of going up and down, and it leads you into the story, and it's like a person's viewpoint from what she's, she's feeling now, and growing up, uh, believing in a book or she always thought the book was kind of lies but she wasn't really 100% sure that her family had fled from this house in Connecticut in uh, New Hampshire or oh, Vermont I forgot already where it was but Vermont so yeah so her father wrote this book about how they had to flee in the night because the house was haunted and people were trying to kill their daughter Maggie and she remembers bits and pieces that come back from time to time but most of the books she has no recollection recollection of and she was only five at the time so that kind of explains why she doesn't quite remember it but she always grew up in the shadow of the book so now she inherits a house that for some reason even though her parents fled 25 years ago they kept the house so she goes in to try to sell it maybe pick up a bit of pieces and fill in blanks on her past and the same things are happening to her that are in her father's book so as she's trying to figure out what's going on in real life it goes back and forth between real life current life and passages from the book that are coming true it's a very interesting read. Like I said, there's lots of ups and downs. It was easy to get into it. It was an easy read. And last night I was up reading from three in the morning till eight o'clock in the morning when I finished. 
yeah, so I did enjoy this book and I'm looking forward to my next book of the month club. So I want to thank you guys all for joining me. I'd love to hear about your selections that you picked from the book of the month and anything I should add to mine, my to be read list. So again, thank you so much, everyone. I hope you go out, have a great week, and we will all chat again soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you.